Hey, what's up, Metal Heavy Music fans? It's Flight of Icarus again with MetalTrenches.com, and today I want to share with you my five favorite Deathcore releases of 2020 so far. <laughs> And hey, if you'd like to be kept up to date with the best and brightest metal bands and albums from the underground and above, then stick with me by hitting that subscribe button down below. But getting right into it, first up on my list is Raleigh, North Carolina progressive deathcore unit Krosis with their album A Memoir to Free Will via Unique Leader Records. This is a stellar album that is a great mix of kind of progressive death metal and deathcore, and just the perfect sort of in-between ground that I think should really please fans of both genres. You've got in influences from all across the map. I hear everything from like Born of Osiris to Volvodynia to Within the Ruins, even animals as leaders on certain parts, Fallujah, and the track Psychoticlism, amazing single, probably one of my favorite songs of the entire year opens with that syncopated vocal hook that's very much like Archspire. It's a very proficiently played album, but also underpinned by those classic excellent grooves that just make the genre what it is. It also has a lot of great dynamics with interludes that range from kind of spooky and atmospheric to classical to some that even sound like a video game soundtrack. Every instrument is most excellently played on this album, right down to the bass guitar that really has some awesome standout moments too. And really, it's a big step up from the already impressive Solum Vatum, which was an album that I really enjoyed. But this takes everything about that album and takes it to the nth degree, like exponential growth on this one. Fantastic work. Do not miss this album. <laughs> Alright, next up we've got Denmark band Cabal with their sophomore album Drag Me Down via Long Branch Records. This was another album that definitely drew me in with their debut, but they are moving in new directions and just maturing their sound with this album. You've got everything from more kind of blackened aesthetic to even some grindcore sounding songs. Gift Givers in particular is just fast and aggressive and really heavy. I mentioned in my review that it felt like it wouldn't be out of place on like a Vermin Womb album. And then there's other tracks like It Haunts Me that has this more ominous atmospheric sound that would have been right at home on a Lorna Shore record. Tongues is probably one of the heaviest tracks of the entire year. This whole album is just oozing this foreboding blackened aesthetic that seems to just like siphon away your life force. And then you've got some really cool guest appearances on here. You've got Matt Heafy from Trivium, Jamie Hales from Polaris, and Kim Song Sternkopf from Mole. It's kind of cool how they balance these just more straightforward, heavy, hard-hitting tracks like on their debut with some outings that are a little bit more radio-friendly too, like not too much, but just treading that line where they're sort of testing out how far can they stretch this thing. No sophomore slump here. Pick up this album. <laughs> All right, and speaking of stretching your sound in new and strange directions, we've got Deathcore Slavs Within Destruction with Yokai via Ultra Heavy Records. This is a weird one. Like, this has very much divided the fan base. There's a whole bunch of people who, like myself, love their earlier albums that are just straight up Deathcore with slam and very aggressive. A lot of those fans heard this album and are, like, pitching it in and saying, I'm done, I'm out. Whereas... A whole other half of the audience, like myself, is just totally intrigued by what they've done with this record. They've gone for this whole, like, anime and Japanese aesthetic. They, they, people are calling it, like, weeaboo deathcore, which I think is hilarious and kind of fitting. They've maintained the heavy parts of their previous albums, like Void and Death Wish. But then they've also pulled in these more eccentric sounds. You've got kind of more Born of Osiris sounding stuff mixed with like SoundCloud rapper sounding stuff. There's like trap music on this album that's going to turn some people off. Deathcore, when you just stick to the basics, to me, gets very boring. And so ultimately, I love that a band like Within Destruction is coming in and just throwing out the rule book and trying some new things to make an album that's definitely one of the most unique of the year, if nothing else. A lot of guest appearances on this album as well, but really from across the spectrum, you got Ryo Kishonita of Crystal Lake, 
You got Bill Saber, Tyosin, Kamiata Plus. I assume these are the rappers on the album because I don't recognize their names. And then you also have Born of Osiris' own Jason Richardson ripping an incredible guitar solo later in the album. So yeah, lots to love here, but also lots to hate if you're not really down for change and not really wanting to mix trap music with your metal and all that. I, I get that. That's fine. But if you want something wholly unique and that stands out from the pack this year, then do yourself a favor and check out Yokai. All right, then we've got Australian progressive deathcore band Baba Rusa with their self-released debut album, Humanoid. I was just blown away by these guys to the point that not only did I buy the album, I bought a shirt, I bought some other merch. I love the sci-fi aesthetic, and it is a concept record if you want to really dig into the lyrics and this whole cybernetic world that they've built. But even if you're not interested in that, the music is just incredible. This perfect balance of technicality and groove that's probably best exemplified by the third single, Catanoia. Some excellent start-stop riffs and head bob inducing rhythms. And then they've got their prog elements again, which is going to be a theme on this list. I mean, some of my favorite deathcore albums this year just happen to have kind of a side of prog and jazz. But the thing that really sold me on this band from the very beginning are the vocals, which come from X crowned in flesh's Kyle Williams and X a night in Texas's Reese Peters. These guys have an excellent range from these really high screeches to the low gutturals. Everyone from fans of Aborted to Infant Annihilator should have something to respect in terms of what they're spitting out on these songs. Very excited to see another relatively new band kicking things off on a very high note, and I can't wait to see what they do next. All right, and then I struggled with which album to include in this last spot. I was originally going to give it to Xenobiotic with More Drake, but ultimately it's kind of an honorable mention because I sort of decided that that album really moves so far into just pure progressive death metal territory that it's almost hard to call it deathcore at this point. But definitely check out that album if you haven't. But ultimately, for this last pick, I'm going to stay in Australia for band Sensory Amusia, dropping this megaton bomb EP Bereavement via Lacerated Enemy Records. This band has this raunchy guitar sound that is this perfect balance of grind and groove that previously I felt that only cattle decapitation could pull off. And there are several moments on this album that very much remind me of that band. You're only getting 18 minutes with this EP, but it's 18 minutes of just pure destruction. You've got the breakneck drumming of death. You've got the squealing guitar riffs of absolute. And another excellent vocal delivery here, just an utter monster with these deep growls that again also kind of recalled Cattle Decapitation's own Travis Ryan. Pure intensity and then that expert use of the cadence to match the music and develop this relentless driving rhythm that courses through every piece of instrumentation. And then they've also got that technical side too with some really arthritis inducing sweeps alongside the groovy chugs. This is definitely one of my favorite EPs of the year and probably one of the heaviest EPs of the year in addition to being a really solid entry in terms of deathcore in general. Once again, excited to see what these guys do in the future, but pick this thing up. Don't miss out on it. It's fantastic. And that's it, y'all. Those are my five favorite Deathcore albums of 2020 so far. Let me know down in the comments which one was your favorite and what did I miss? What are your favorite Deathcore releases this year so far? And of course, stick around because I got plenty more videos coming right after this one. I've done some other lists already. I've had my favorite metalcore releases of 2020 so far. I did my favorite hardcore releases of 2020 so far. And then also I've got full album reviews, album tier lists, interviews with the bands on the podcast. You name it, we've got it. So plenty of reasons to subscribe if you haven't already. Also down in the description, you can find links to our social media, the email newsletter, and our Patreon and subscribe star if you want to take that extra jump to becoming a full-on supporter. But that will do it for this one. Flight of Icarus signing off. I will see you in the trenches.